right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thank you again so much for joining me. The topic of today's discussion is going to be the auto brake panel on the A320 flight deck there. But before we get started, as always, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, please hit that like button. Hit subscribe, leave comments down below, all that kind of good stuff just helps me out immensely, and I really appreciate it if you've done so already. So I will go ahead and bring up the slide that I've got to talk with you about today. And as we mentioned, we're going to discuss the, the auto brake system on the airplane. So we'll we'll start with the you know the systems and, and a little bit of in-depth stuff that I wanted to share with you, and then we'll kind of come back. We'll talk about the buttons and the lights, all that kind of stuff. We'll wrap it up today, as we always do with the Q&A section. So just uh, to start with, right off the bat, just by virtue of the name itself, the auto brake system, it's you know, specifically the automatic capability the airplane has to apply the brakes for us in a number of different scenarios. And we'll, we'll kind of talk about the, you know, the, the three cases that I kind of think of as you know, the, the biggest reason and why it's so nice to have this on the airplane and, and what it really does for us in each of these types of situations. So the first one, you know, we'll talk about the, the scenario of the rejected takeoff. So you know, if we were in this situa sort of situation, it's a very you know critical thing that's happening, and it's just one more thing that we can do that that kind of unloads the job of the pilot. If the airplane is able to you know give it all it's got and apply the max braking in this sort of situation, is you know the ideally the human is just concentrated enough on keeping the airplane pointed straight down the runway and just making sure everything is is operating as advertised and making sure the plane is decelerating. So it's it's just kind of nice to have, of course, in that sort of situation. The other big one that you know I think of is you know these these times when we're uh, landing in a, a windy situation or on a slick runway, perhaps. Uh, it's really nice to have the auto brakes there because you know same type of, of idea. You know if you're you're so task saturated, just concentrated and keeping the airplane you know nose straight, you know going right down the runway and tracking down that center line. You know, having to worry about the brakes um, or not having to worry about them, let's say in the sense the auto brakes are doing a job for you, it's just, it's one less thing to detract your attention and, and also potentially uh, actually aid you in maintaining directional control of the airplane. And if you think about why this is, you know, the, the auto brakes themselves, you know, being, you know, a computerized system and a, an automated thing, they have the ability of, of applying the exact same, uh, same amount of brake pressure to each wheel. But if we were to, you know, manipulate the the brakes ourselves as humans with the the foot pedals as you know you know with your toes on the airbus they are like most other airplanes out there um, you actually have a, a a habit or a potential of uh, applying slightly different brake pressures with each different foot and you know what this does for you in that search sort of situation is you kind of work against yourself so the airplane will sort to you know drag to one side to depend on which more which brake is getting more pressure so it's just you know, one less thing to throw into the mix if you're just trying to keep the nose straight down the runway again. Um, working against yourself by making these left and right movements uh, is just, it's not, um, it's not efficient or it's not, you know, the easiest thing on the pilot to say. And then the, the last one that I always think about is, you know, landing in a, a, um, a situation where it's a very hot uh, environment, let's say, maybe you're landing at a desert airport or high density altitudes or whatnot, and you, you have this potential of heating up the brakes same sort of thing. The human actually has the way of over applying, you know, more brakes than is actually needed and making those brakes work harder. But the auto brakes, if you use them, you let them do their job, they'll actually do a really good job of, of smoothly decelerating the aircraft and keeping the, the braking energy at a, a constant rate, let's say. And, and you can actually land in these situations uh, without the, you know, overheating the brakes essentially or without having the need to use brake fans or any of these types of things. So, uh, it's just one one kind of nice nice to have, let's say, feature on the airplane that I'm I'm really thankful is there. Um, you know, every day when we go out and fly, this it just makes it, our job so much easier. If you can't already tell, you know, based on what I've already said. So, let's talk a little bit specifically also about the 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 brake uh, modes themselves and how we use them. So the first one on the the right hand side here, we'll talk about. You know, this is the first one that we'll actually use every time we we go to take off the airplane. We're going to set the auto brake um, button there to the to the on position, and we're, we're basically arming the the max mode essentially. So, right off the bat, too, one thing to make mention of is that the max is a takeoff only setting, and they they kind of alluded to this by the way they designed the panel. You can see the the brake in the you know the plastic here, the panel, or what have you. It just differentiates you know the right side with the max to so the left side with the low and medium. And, and like I said, max is only used on takeoffs. You'll never use this on landing. It's just the way they designed it. I'm not sure why they, why exactly they did it that way, but you know, that's the way it's set up. And then 
as we, we more or less already mentioned, the low and the medium are your landing only settings. So you're not gonna use this or arm this anytime you're getting ready to make a takeoff. You're only gonna use this when you're planning to decelerate on your landing roll. And you know, these are your options you have available to you. So a little bit also about how they work. You know, just as the name implies with the max, uh, the max setting is gonna give it all she's got. So it'll give you the max amount of pressure that it, that it can give to you. But the low and the medium are actually set up to give you uh, a little bit different sort of braking and I want to bring up the the FCOM right now and, and make this reference here. It is a, a really interesting thing to talk about when we talk about auto brakes and that is the fact that they're actually they're aiming to target a specific deceleration rate and this is interesting for a couple reasons but first right off the bat you know let's talk about the medium setting here. Um, once it gets the signal and, and by the way with all these the scenarios here the signal that actually uh, the, the auto brakes are looking for is the um, the spoilers coming up you know, either, you know, once again, the rejected takeoff scenario where we land the, the airplane on the ground. Um, the, the spoiler's coming up. So two, two seconds after that happens in the, the medium setting here, uh, the auto brakes will activate and they'll give you a, a three meter per second or 9.8 uh, feet per second squared uh, rate of deceleration. On the low setting, uh, a little bit longer of a delay. You got four seconds uh, delay time from when those spoilers come up to when the brakes start grabbing. You get a uh, 1.7 meter per second square or a 5.6 foot per second square rate of deceleration. Now, you know, one other, you know, thing to talk about too, or, or breaking this differentiation part is, you know, you think about, you know, most days low is more than adequate and it's designed this way to, to kind of keep the passengers com comfortable and it's not this really, you know, aggressive like form of braking. Like if you use medium, you can really feel it. You know, once those brakes start to grab, you know, the, the people are, you know, thrown forward in their seats a little bit and they, they feel it quite a bit more in a low setting. It's a lot more gradual, a lot more gentler. You can kind of see that as evidence, you know, right by the numbers that we're, we're pointing to right here. But, you know, one of the other things I wanted to make mention of is there's actually a, a somewhat, um, from a physics standpoint, an interconnected nature between the auto brakes and the thrust reversers and how much work the brakes are actually having to do. So one very important thing to, to recap and, and you know, just drive home with this whole concept is the fact that, you know, the airplane is only looking for the specified deceleration rate. So it's actually going to modulate the brakes just to, you know, all throughout the landing rollout, depending on whatever's happening around the airplane, be it, you know, reverse thrust or maybe a strong headwind in the face or a changing wind or any, you know, number of things that could affect it. But it's always looking to target, like we said, that deceleration rate. So the reason why I bring this up and the reason why I make mention of it is if you're using the auto brakes, um, you can actually, you know, think of it like, you know, treating the airplane a little bit more nicely or, or making it not have to work so hard if you use the reverse thrust. Because the reverse thrust from those engines, it kind of adds to the braking capability. So once again, like we said, those brakes aren't going to have to modulate or grab as tight under those carbon disc brakes down there. It just, it saves the parts in the airplane. It generates a lot less heat at the brakes, let's say specifically. Uh, so it's, you know, more or less the, the way that we do things every time is we'll use the auto brakes and uh, the reverse thrust concurrently essentially. But I just wanted you to have that, that tie-in in your minds that the airplane is actually going to stop the exact same amount of distance whether or not you're using a reverse thrust with the auto brakes or you're not using a reverse thrust you know, with the auto brakes. So hopefully that makes sense uh, what I'm trying to explain to you guys. If, if it doesn't, leave questions down in the, the comment box down there below. And, you know, one thing also, too, to make mention of is, you know, most of the time the, the use of the auto brakes is never necessarily, at least with landing ways, it's not a mandated thing. So it's really a, at the pilot's discretion if they want to use it or they don't want to use it. And there are some times when, you know, if we're landing into a strong headwind and we know we've got to roll a good ways down the runway to get onto our high-speed taxiway, it's just expeditious. Most of the time you'll actually go with the auto brakes off because, you know, it'll actually do the job of slowing the airplane and you kind of have this awkward period of time that you need to, in some cases, actually add thrust to get yourself up to the, uh, the, the specified taxiway that you want to exit on. So, uh, once again, a, a real discretionary thing. And, but you know, like I said, it, it's it's very um, it's smart to use them, like we had mentioned in the the situations when you've got adverse weather, you've got slippery runways, uh, you know, crosswinds, things of that nature, in the hot. Um, you know, hot, high altitude airport types of uh, situations. And, you know, one, one small thing that this made me think of is, you know, a real world scenario that I can tell you of at a time when I saw this really become to, to or, you know, come to be a relevant factor in this day's operation. We were coming into Seattle and it was a really breezy, gusty day. It was raining like crazy. The, the runway was slick, of course, because the water was on the ground. Now, 
We had planned to use the auto brakes because, like I'd mentioned before, it just makes your job easier as a pilot. You're just concentrated on trying to use the rudder to keep the airplane, you know, going down the runway. But normally we're used to disengaging the auto brakes, you know, somewhere around 70 or 80 knots. And by the way, the, the way that we disengage them, you know, in the real world is just by pressing the brake pedals. Uh, you could reach up and press the button to get them to disengage, but, you know, that's not how anybody really does it in the real world. So, you know, uh, you know, as we're rolling out, we're about, you know, 80, 70 knots or what have you. I, I reached up and I, I depressed the, the pressure on the brake pedals, as I always do. And, you know, we started to feel a little bit of, you know, directional instability and the plane started to wander a little bit. And the best that we can ascertain is that, you know, when you do that, you know, think about you as a human. You reach up and you put, um, you know, brake pressure with both your feet. As, as hard as you try, it is nearly impossible to put the exact same amount of pressure on those brake pedals that, uh, you know, the, the computer could do a better job of applying the exact amount of braking that you might want. But your feet, you know, just naturally, you're going to put a little bit more into one side. So the airplane has this additional want to sort of, you know, list left or right. It just so happened that, you know, the, the nose was right on top of the, um, the center line of the runway. And of course, it's a painted surface. There's a little more slick with the, um, you know, the rain and everything. And it was just, it was a real good demonstration of the fact that, you know, it's actually to your benefit or advantageous, certainly in a situation like this, to just let those auto brakes do the job all the way down to you get the airplane to accelerate to the rate where you're, you're pretty much creeping off, um, you know, the runway on your, on your taxi, you know, or exiting the runway on a taxi sort of operation. So um, I, I hope that all ties together. It just kind of drives home the fact that, you know, when you introduce the manual braking, you're just, you know, you're, you're, Affecting the way the system's operating, you're working against yourself and you're adding those extra variables into the mix that you don't necessarily need to do. So it's just a good example, like I said, of just, you know, how the auto brakes can really be a big advantage to you when you're landing these sort of situations. So let's come back to the slide here and we'll, we'll just talk about the, the buttons themselves and the lights and everything. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, you know, just normally when you enter the airplane, everything is just off. You know, there's the lights are out. There's just black switches in here. And these switches are just an on off spring loaded type of thing. So you're just, you know, you press the button once, you'll get the on light come on and it just it really means that the system is armed essentially. And, uh, you know, the, it's interesting too that they, they put an indication and that's actually what the D cell um, green light here is telling us. I know it's kind of smudged out. It's hard to read on this slide here. I apologize for the, the quality of the picture, but the, the D cell light is actually the one that will illuminate when it, the airplane is telling us that the auto brakes have actually engaged and they're doing their job. And that the D cell light very specifically will come on if the plane sees that it's achieved uh, at least 80% of that targeted deceleration rate that we looked at in the manual uh, a few months ago there. So it's just telling you, yes, it's working as advertised, it's doing its job. Uh, but, you know, like we said, just just the the fact that the blue light is on is more of like an armed indication to us. And, you know, like I, I you know, just wanted to recap once again, too, we kind of mentioned it, that the, the brakes will get, um, the, the max setting before a takeoff will get put in the on or the arm position where you're taxiing out, you're doing your before takeoff checklist. And then the for the landing scenario, the low and the medium are going to get engaged when you're doing your, your approach briefing. And you can actually do this all the way up at altitude or, you know, when you're descending down before you do your approach checklist. So it doesn't really matter, but it's just, you know, if you're curious about when we actually do it in the real world, usually it's way up at altitude, you know, about, gosh, you know, 30 or 45 minutes out and we're briefing the approach that we're planning to fly and, you know, what, what aircraft equipment we're planning on using. So a whole lot of data, a lot of nuggets, a lot of a lot of pieces of information to tell you about those auto brakes there. If you have any more questions other than that, please leave them down in the comment section down below there. And as always, I'll be more than happy to try to do my best to field them for you. So with that being said, the Q&A section that I've got today comes in from a viewer. This was a few days ago um, by the name of Simrat Paul Singh. So I hope I'm saying your name correctly. But Simrat, thank you so much for tuning in. I, I appreciate you. Uh, watching the channel, but more specifically, I appreciate you leaving a question here for me. So Samrat was watching the video that I had done a few days ago. We were talking about the flight control page and, you know, he had noticed on the flight control page that the, the pitch trim available that, you know, you could input is actually, there's more travel essentially in the nose up direction than there is in the nose down. And I wanted to, I wanted to break this down and talk to us a little bit more. It's a really good question and, and it deserves a little bit more explanation. So Specifically, he says, I, I have a question about why on the Airbus 320, the elevator has less pitch trim down input as compared to pitch up input. So just, you know, very, 
very simply from a physics and an aerodynamic standpoint, I mean, let's, let's assume that this pen here, you know, symbolizes our airplane, you know, every single airplane, you know, pretty much anywhere is designed so that the CG is forward uh, to an extent that um, the, the airplane wants to fall back towards the earth, you know, nose forward. And if you think about, well, why that is, of course, you know, it's a, a stability thing where, you know, if the airplane were to be in a stall, it just naturally wants to break the stall and fall back down towards the earth and get the wing flying again, all that kind of good stuff. So with it being said that we, we've almost always, when we're flying around, you most of the time have a, a more or less a nose heavy airplane. You could think of it that way. So with regard to the, the trimmable horizontal stabilizer on the back of the airplane and how much input, you know, we have available and how much we really need as it relates to this question there, if you think about it, you know, most of the time the airplane is having to, to do more work to keep the nose up, you know, because once again, it's fighting that gravity, uh, you know, pulling the nose back towards the earth. So you really, you physically need to have more travel available to you to get all that weight lifted up and get the airplane pitched up to get it, you know, to do what you needed to do. And if you, you look at the, the opposite scenario where if you wanted to get the airplane nose to go down, all you need to do is make a very small trim input in the nose down direction. And, you know, once again, gravity and Mother Earth is already helping you and doing you the job of, you know, pulling that nose down. So it's just, you physically don't need a lot of movement, and a lot of force back there to get that to happen. So that's the reason why it's designed the way it is. Um, Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. If you, you have any more questions about that or anything else in general, um, please leave them down in the comment section below there. So hope everybody is staying healthy and safe. I appreciate you tuning in. And uh, one more thing, if you uh, if anybody wants to pick up the, uh, the bus driver t-shirt, uh, I've got it in the Teespring store there. So uh, appreciate you supporting me if you feel so inclined to do so. But have a wonderful day. We'll talk again real soon.